Puerto Rican kid, bald head, loves snakes, loves Blizzy, Sergio Chacon. Yeah. Yeah. What up, pa? Yo, Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the BBS podcast. It's your boy, Sergio Chacon, a.k.a. Blizzy Chacon. That's just wax. That means always going to be dirtbag shit podcast. The BBS Peace, 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 and welcome to the DBS Podcast. It's your boy, Sergio Chicon. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope you guys are feeling fantastically well. This week, I am joined by the host of Black Twitter Talk, Chucked Up News, my man, the very funny stand-up comedian, Mr. Charles McBee. To the DBS Podcast, where I send my guest a link to the, to the Zoom show two minutes before showtime. Dirt bag shit, yo. <laughs> Yo, the thing I like about you is that you easy breezy. Like somebody else would be like, hey, did you send me the link? Knowing damn well I didn't send the link. You're cool. You're like, I'm switching times on your ass. Yo, yo, McBee, can you do 1230? Word, easy. That also lets you know how much isn't going on in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm acting like there's a lot going on in my life. Right. Like, what's this nigga doing? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yo, I'm outside. Oh, no. Outside. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad. Yeah. What's this motherfucker doing outside? I'll tell you what I'm doing outside. Because gyms are closed, and you know I'm a boxing instructor, trainer. Right. I've been reduced to holding punching pads under oak trees at Tompkins oh, my- Square Park. <laughs> yo, <laughs> I'm by a I'm by a tree. Just one, two, one, two. Roll. Uh, Watch out for that syringe on your left foot. One, two, one, two. Roll. Okay, there's a homeless guy with a cart right behind you. Duck and weave. One, two, one, two. Slip, slip. Be careful. There's a dead rat right behind you. Oh, bro. Y'all doing that Rocky training. That's that Rocky shit right there. Yeah, dogs. You know, we we were out today, uh, you know, at... uh, at nine o'clock in the morning, people just woke up swollen from the holiday festivities. That's wild, man. Yeah, oh, you, oh, that reminds me. How how Merry Christmas, bro. Oh, I appreciate that. Even though I don't, I don't, you know, me and my cel- me and my, my my family don't celebrate that. Well, happy whatever it is y'all celebrate. No, no, we, we celebrate that shit. I'm just trying to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to be one of those dudes to stump you early in the yeah. show. Like that. We don't celebrate that. My face gets mad close to the screen. <laughs> Why would you assume, McBee? Oh, I don't know. The Santa hats <laughs> behind you. <laughs> the fact that your story is you, you, you're grown ass walking around with PJs and the Santa Claus across your shirt. <laughs> How you been, brother? You good? I'm good, man. You know what's crazy? It's like... Uh... You know what's funny is like whenever you say you good during these times, people look at you like a dirt bag. Like you can't say that confidently. You got to be like, oh, well, you know, all things considered, you know, with the times that we're in, you know, I'm hanging in there. Like, nah, man, I'm actually good. Like, uh, you know, uh, had some, you know, lost a few people and stuff like that, which was sad, but you know, we getting through it. But other than that, like, yeah, I'm it's healthy. so true. Like you, you're not allowed to say you're good unless you got a little bit of a body count. Right, right, like, right, right. <laughs> yo, I lost two people, but I'm good, dogs. Good. I can talk about my celebrations right. and my accomplishments. Okay, you lost two people. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll let you get that off. We'll let you get that <laughs> off. Yo, I lost two people, but I, you know, I, I haven't had this money, much money in my whole life. Right. So, <laughs> all things considered. All things considered. <laughs> Yeah, you got to always use all things considered. Yep, yep. <laughs> they look at you like a straight third bag, yo. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, yo, why can't I just be okay? Especially when, like, the uh, the George Floyd shit was going down, protests and all of that. Yo, white people was calling me. Like, they just found out my mother was on, like, her deathbed or something like that. Like, they was calling me like, yo, we heard what happened. You know, is there anything I can do? Are you, how are you? Are you okay? I'm like, yo, I didn't know this nigga. You know that, right? Like, <laughs> like that's not my cousin. Right. 
Like, right. like it was, that, it was that, was, that was interesting how um how white people responded to that. They felt super guilty. The white guilt was at an all time high, son. I had that a couple of I had a couple of my white friends reach out. And because I was posting about the protest I have, I attended, I attended, they would say, what can I do? And I was like, you know, my Venmo, you could drop some money in there. It made me feel better. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Get that cash app. I'll tell you exactly you know? what you can and, do. And that guilt lasted for six hours. The next right, post exactly. is done fucking doing yoga. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next. All right, we done uh, now. We good? We straight? Next. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Protest and shouting with your fist up is so June 2020. Yo, yo, we done. Yo, no, I know. I know what we can do. We'll we'll change our Instagram screen to black, and then that'll erase. Then we good. We straight after that. Yo, let me tell you, man. That wave was powerful. Like if you didn't, if you had enough goal to not put your 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 your, your screen black, yeah, you you you. I gotta give you two things. Your supreme dirt bag one, and two. <laughs> Yeah, I admire you, you standing up to that shit. Because that's a right. couple of friends I have who I love. They didn't do that shit. And it's very few. It's only like one or two. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, you ain't going to, you, you went, I, I went, I left, the, I, gave them, I gave them all day until like 6 p.m. hit. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, why are you not going to, you just not going to pretend like this shit ain't going on. You're not going to black your screen. They're like, nah, man, we're not doing that goofy shit. It's yeah. like, all right. I gotta yeah, respect them. those people are hardcore. I yeah. give them that because that is gone. That is like everyone noticed that shit. Yep. If yep. you didn't paint your 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 your, your post black, people noticed that people were like that. Ooh. It stood out because you scrolling through and it's all black, and then you see this bright ass, this asshole. <laughs> you see a motherfucker, see a motherfucker on a microphone at Broadway Comedy Club like this. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh. yo. nah, man. Yeah, I respect it, man. Stand, you know, I don't, I don't like bullying people into activism. Like, if, if something, if you down for a certain cause, cool. But like, if you not, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that because it's not authentic. If you got to bully somebody into doing something that you want yeah, them to do, bully, guilt somebody. Guilt, yeah, yeah. And, and there's there's so many different approaches to it, right? Because uh, the summer was draped with that, right? And it, you know, and, and, and some people might be more uh, socially conscious than others, but that we were all like thrown into it. Like, where you at? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, I think I got me a cardboard around here, some markers. <laughs> Let me get involved. But I definitely like my approach was definitely because it was it was so emotional and it was so much yeah. going on that. I, you know what? First and foremost, I needed to be a little more educated because I wasn't yeah, going to yeah. run with, I was getting a lot of information like off the jump, but I was like, you know what? It helped, it, it kind of inspired me to study a little bit and I needed yeah. to listen to both sides and get all that. It felt good to actually study something. I needed to get more knowledge because yeah. um, there was a lot of shit that I know, I just didn't know. And I wasn't going to pretend that I did. I, I've done that enough of my life. Exactly, exactly. That's the thing, if you, as long as somebody, like the thing that's been taken away today is critical thinking. Like everybody is just a herd. So it's just like, whatever you'll do, people will do whatever it takes to not get bullied, not get fired or not get outed or something like that. So if everybody is on this, on this wave, that's the wave I'm on. Cause I ain't trying to like go against it, but like, you just got to be a critical thinker, like do a little bit of research and make up your own mind on stuff. Right, right. And I had to, I, you know, I, I had to listen to the other side. You know, a lot. A, a, I, I even went as far <laughs> to to uh, listen to uh, Candace Owens and her show. Yeah. I had to listen to her because she was getting so much momentum and traction that I was like, I got to listen to what she said. And she's, you know, she's so articulate and yep. smart that it's like, yo, that's like a good, that's a good vehicle. Yeah. But then she dispute, you know, she'll start off strong. Like I'm, I'm like, oh shit, maybe I am a Republican. 
<laughs> yo, yo, maybe these motherfuckers should have say, you know, should have resist. But yep. then you give, a, you give a 12, 15 minutes, and yep. they're like, ah, oh, nah, nah, she a dirtbag, she a dirtbag. Dirtbag, yep, yep. She, had, but she's a genius at she's that. She's smart, you know, she's she, articulate. At that, she is brilliant at what <laughs> she does. Uh, like you said, yeah, she'll start, she'll, she'll say, the, the, the best way to manipulate people or to, to try and get people on your side is to say things that really nobody can disagree with. Just to have points in there that nobody can disagree with. And then it's just like, so people was kind of like, okay, yeah, I mean, they make it. And then you slide that dirt bag shit <laughs> yeah. in there. You gotta slide that shit in. Yeah. Like, wait, what? Huh? Wait, what? Yeah, now you're walking into dirt bag punches like a boxer doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And then moving out the way, like, wait, wait, I'm walking into some bullshit right now. Yep. Look, start that shit off like children should be protected from pedophiles. Right. Children should be protected from pedophiles. Democrats are the devil. Children <laughs> should be protected. Like, wait, I, 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 uh, Democrats are, I, what? And then if you disagree, you're like, oh, so you think children shouldn't be protected from pedophiles? Like, no, that's not the part that I was disagreeing with. It, it was when you said the other thing about the thing about the thing. Right. They they brilliant at that shit, man. Yeah, they Democrats are. Democrats suck. Are. Liberals suck at messaging. Yeah. They just yeah, be and, and, and I've said that, you know, time and time again. Um, especially, you know, this is something that we discussed like on other episodes, on previous episodes. I can't help but even the... Uh, like campaigning for defund the police. I never yeah. thought those words. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's terrible. It's a terrible marketing strategy. Yeah. Anytime you say like defund, like take, you know, like especially Abolish. for money, you know, like it's just, you, you're digging a hole for yourself. And Yo. I, and, and, I, and I physically had to, once again, I was like, I was like forced to do my own research. I was like, like people were really pushing that. And I was like, yo, I can't really, I don't know enough about that. That shit sounds weird to me. Bro. And, and sure enough, it means taking some money out, put in different social, right. you know, organizations that will help, you know, uh, take the, the load off police work, which includes everything, you know, right. uh, you know, uh, going into a, 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 an apartment Ill. where someone has mental illness, let mm. you know, this kind of spreading it out a little bit and hiring mm -hmm. other people to take on the burden of, you know, of the social ills, which is like, you know, you know, drugs, uh, you know, mental illness and so forth, all, for, all under that umbrella. And I had to understand it. I was like, oh, sure, why not, man? These guys are, there's a lot of money going into here. Allow that shit to be spread a little bit. We're real professionals in that field. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know? but they they don't. I had to have some a political science uh, attorney <clears throat> come on my podcast to explain it to me and before I knew what it was. Like, because I was just hearing defund the police. I'm like, yo, these niggas really trying to like get these dudes out of here, like for real. Because let me tell you something, as a black dude, if they actually abolish the police, like got rid of just all police and just left everybody up to their own devices, my ass is gonna be in Sweden. By next Friday, you understand me? Like <laughs> with, a, with a white, <laughs> with a white the, girl with, with blonde hair and blue eyes, and, I, and I'll be like, you know what? I old new Charles McBee got down yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Sweden next week, like I, like somewhere chilling. It's the crazy thing is, is actually racist because because there's some people that feel like, and a lot of people, and the people that feel this way. They should just completely out of like all leave people up to their own devices, which in this because it's not like I said this one time. Just one. hold up, hold up one second. You know what I'm saying? Like
Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cool. cool. That was the that, that was the first time I had ever really gotten uh what defund the police meant broken down to me. Uh right. before then I was just hearing that constant like defund, abolish, abolish, abolish. And I'm gonna be real like just based on that alone, like most black people do not agree with the concept of just getting rid of police in general and right. just leaving it up to leaving it up to the citizens to do whatever. Like, like to actually think that, like what liberals don't understand or, or white people, whatever, don't understand is it's actually kind of racist to assume that black people don't want to be able to call the police too. Right. When they when some shit goes down, they just want it to be handled fairly and be handled correctly. Right. But we want to call them niggas too. <laughs> Somebody breaking into my crib. Shit. Yeah, man. I wanna you know, half half the shit we don't want to deal with as citizens. Like, yeah, when when people people are, are hardcore on that side, like, oh yeah, the a boss of police will govern us. Like, I don't want to deal with half that shit. Like, <laughs> what do I look like? I see someone Wait, taking a shit in between cars. I'm like, police officer, there's someone over here taking a shit in between the cars. <laughs> right. I don't want I don't I don't want to jump into that. Hell yeah. A domestic dispute in the street. I saw this dude hemming up his girl the other day. I was like, officer! <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah, I was fully capable. I had a pit bull with me. I was like, officer, my neck got straight. I was like, officer. <laughs> and I walked like a hundred feet away and I looked behind me. I was like, just to see what went out but from a distance. Right, 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 right. Fuck yeah. that. I've, I've done that, that shit. Oh, that's hilarious. I've done that shit before. I try to stop yeah. a domestic dispute in the street. And then they both, the dude and the girl flipped on me. They both jump you. <laughs> that's how it be sometimes. That's how it be. Yo, call the police. Call the police, man. Yo, but any yeah, profession, I, you know, whether it's fucking, if I go into, you know, uh, a comedy club and I see my dudes on their phone, if I go to Amsterdam and I'm walking the, the red light district and I see prostitutes on their phone, all that shit bothers me. But nothing bothers me more than a cop on their phone. <laughs> right, nothing irritates me more right. than seeing an officer on their phone. That the, the Karen comes out of me, hard body. I'm right. like, that's my tax money, and you're looking down on your phone. Look straight, act like you're scanning. That's why there's so many, so much crime going on because you're sitting there on your damn phone. Word, yo, fucking playing Candy Crush. You know what's crazy is like, uh, do you remember the first time you realized that you're probably older than most of the cops that you see like walking around or whatever? Like, like you get to that age where you get pulled over or, or somebody or a cop is approaching you or whatever, and they're clearly younger than you. And you like, yo, yo, this is, it hit well, different. Well, well, yeah, I, I, like, you know, I don't have to. I shouldn't have to respect you. Yeah, I was like, motherfucker, you born in two thousand. <laughs> you born when Eminem's first album dropped. Fuck out my <laughs> face. I was eighteen years old. <laughs> like this, don't feel like I used to. Used to feel like, damn, it's not only because it's a cop, but it's an old, older person of authority. Like you're, a, you're a child. Like how are you able to boss me? Nah, this don't feel right. I'm not feeling this right here. That's so fun. Have you ha, have you actually dealt with that? I, you know, I gotta say, it's been a very long time since I've been pulled over by the cops. I think I was with Chris one time, and he was driving, and we got pulled over. He got tick, he got a ticket for running a stop sign, but the cop was older. But it's been yes. years. I haven't been stopped in a long time, and I guess any interaction, it has been a guy who is considerably older. So I haven't had that feeling, but I have thought about that for sure. Yo, I've been, I haven't been stopped in a really long time, but I think it's also because <clears throat> I get way more, the older I get, I, I follow the rules way more. Like I'm in every aspect of life. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I turn into a, more of a square 
the older I get, like if it's a line, if I'm at the supermarket or whatever, and it's a line and it's supposed to be like certain things, I'm like making sure I got the right items and the right, li like I'm way more aligned with like being a productive, <laughs> at, maybe because the older you get and when you start to make a little bit of money, like you, 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 you become more of an asset to society. <laughs> 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 when you're young and broke, you're like, man, I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. Yeah, like, it's true. When you're young and broke, you'll be quick to like, yeah, you be walking down the street with cheese doodles, your fingers orange from cheese doodle crust, and you just fucking find a corner and take a piss in, like, fuck it. Yeah, you don't care. You don't, you don't care. care. But now it's like, I'm, I'm more like, I'll, I'll speak because I'm just like, I don't want nothing to interrupt anything that I have going on in life, like even a little bit. So it's like, if I'm driving now somewhere, it's cause I got somewhere to be. I don't need to be getting pulled over. I don't have time to be getting pulled over or I don't have time to do a night in jail for some dumb shit or a weekend for some, or whatever the case. Or I got to go to court to do this I shit, know. this shit. It, it, it seems to me that I think as we get older, we just become more patient. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. A lot of the shit that I would normally get in trouble for is lack of patience. And mm -hmm. I don't have patience. So, for example, my Metro card doesn't work. And I sweat, you know, I feel like hopping okay. over that shit, you know, right. and just breaking the law. Well, I, I had money in here last week. Right, right, And now right. I'll go to the token clerk and he never wants to talk to you. No never, matter what, ever. they never want to. They're like, on their newspaper. They like, yo, I didn't I didn't take this job to help people, all right? <laughs> like, yo, token, yo, token booth clerks, and it's hilarious that we still call them token booth clerks. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're pissed off because we <laughs> haven't allowed them to evolve from that. And we still got them working in that disgusting AIDS riddle aquarium. <laughs> It's like, yo, damn, yo. Supreme dirtbag job, bro. Yo, for real. I actually, now, I feel, now I think about it, I actually, I, I understand why they don't fuck with people. Like, if yeah, I had to work that job, I'd be like, yo. Yo, they're dealing with the public, but that's hilarious. They don't fuck with people. Right. <laughs> it's your whole job, your whole description is to help people. Yeah. And they like, nah. And they always look at you like they're wearing glasses, right? They always go, they don't have any glasses. Yeah. But, uh, Roll their eyes, swipe seven times. I don't know why it's always seven times. I got swipe. And then it's like, yeah, go through. Yo, it's a, and it'd be the simplest problem that they could easily just fix for you. But they be on, sometimes they be on that dirt bag, high horse shit. You'd be like, yo, I swiped uh, or whatever, but this is a, you know, I, or I, one time, like you might be on the wrong side. And so you might be there and be like, yo, I swiped on the other side, but I'm supposed to be on this side. I just need to like, they like, nah, you gotta wait 15 minutes. Like, come yeah, on, it, bro. It's, it's, the, it's supreme dirtbag shit. So I recently <clears throat> just started taking a train again and I'm not taking it a lot. So I won't buy a monthly um, card. I'll yeah. put like 40 bucks in there. So I have 40 right. bucks on a card. I used it once and then it just didn't work anymore. So I, I just happened to be at a station that I have a token book clerk. So I hop yeah. the train and I told myself, you know what? So I make my money back. I'm hopping the train 40 times and I'm giving them some money. So I hopped right. one. I got 39 more to go. So I might get locked up. <laughs> I'm going to get <laughs> locked up. The yeah, I'm playing the odds, but I'm going to do a four. I got 39 more hops because I'm not mailing it in. I actually mailed it in. I probably won't get a response. But until then, until I get my money back, <laughs> I'm hopping the train, bro. Yo. They owe you that. They, <laughs> they owe, owe you that. that. No. Every that. time somebody get, every time like undercover police come out, like jump out of the sewers and shit. Whenever somebody uh jumps a turnstile, whatever, I'm always thinking like New York City. There is so much shit going on, and this is like this is the crime you needed to stop right now. Yeah. Of everything happening in New York. This is what you was waiting on all day. Right. To take down this 20 year old that's trying to, that 
just hop the turnstile. It's like, yeah. they, right, you know they, what? They don't, they don't even want to do that shit, man. They're just like, they, they just want, yeah. they just wait for the eight hours to go by. <laughs> they don't want to do that. I'm sure. Yeah. Straight you know, up. Like, I, I, but then again, you get the, the you get the hardcore ones that are all suited up and they want to do that. But I think for the most part, that is like I don't want to do this shit either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a job to do. <laughs> I don't want to do this shit either. Mm. Got a damn job to do. I was yo, you are honestly one of my favorites to follow. I don't like Facebook, but I always look forward to your post. Thanks, man. And the shit that you, you had me cracking up, and I don't normally like comb through it like this for the show, but I wanted to. Um, you had so much funny shit that I just wanted to address a few of them and see if we could like dissect them a little more. <laughs> that dude that married his sex doll is that a true story? Yeah, it's a true story. <laughs> true story. <laughs> Real shit. I I didn't um <clears throat> I didn't dig too deep into it because it's such a dumb, crazy story, but I just saw it the other day. Um, and yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, bodybuilder or whatever. Right. And he married and he, and he got it on tape. Like he had a ceremony, his friend, this is the crazy part of that story. He, he married the sex doll and it was a whole wedding with friends and family. Like they was all there. She, like told, there was a toast. There was like a whole thing. My thing is, it's not him. Like you see crazy motherfuckers do shit, whatever. Right. But when you see the friends coming out, I'm judging the friends and family right. more than I'm judging this dude. A I don't know of, what this- Yeah, a bunch of enabling motherfuckers. I look <laughs> yeah, the other right. way like it's all good. Right. Like they the dirt bags. They the real dirt they bags. The dirt bags. Jeez, Yo, it's be whatever. All right, we back in the mix. Boom. Boom, boom, bong, bong. We put Kevin Samuels on, on, on pause. Who, who's Kevin Samuels? Yo, he's this cat on YouTube. He's like a, kind of like a dating coach. Okay. But he be giving it to women raw, yo. Know, like, like he's a date, he's a dating coach for women. Okay. who are trying to find like high, quote unquote high value men like top tier men make six figures whatever whatever yeah. but the way he be <laughs> the way he be coming at him be so dirt bag yo he's king dirt bag yo right now he's on some Dante he's Nero king shit dirt bag on the internet what's that you know Dante yeah yeah Nero? yeah uh, it, yeah he's like a um i would say Dante Nero but but more and no disrespect, that there's different styles, like more refined. He like wears a suit. He's like slick, that type of shit. Whereas Dante is more gangster. Yeah. He's more, he's like that, but in a more polished look to him or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, 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 yeah. similar. And he's like, let, it's, it's crazy. He let these chicks have it. Does he condone, oh, he's a does he condone that sort of, uh, I guess, elitist way of like picking your, your mate, like, is he like into like, oh, a woman does have the right to pick out a man who who makes six figures, or is he like against that? He he, no, he's he's for it, but his take on it is, you can be that you 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 can pick out a man who makes six figures, blah blah blah, but you gotta be the type of woman that that man will want, and are you that type of woman that that man? Are you the type of woman that the man you want wants? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that's where it, that's where they like lose their mind because they be like, "What you mean? I'm perfect." And he be like, <laughs> it, 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 "It get <laughs> be yo, it now. get wild." Now, does the um, the type of woman that most of these men want fall into a certain category, or like they like, you know, does it seem that most men want a woman who like cooks and cleans and like? bangs out fucks three times a day is that, that type of shit is a specific category or it varies yeah his 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 nah his his is pretty consistent his, according to him she needs to be fit physically fit that that alone be having you know you can't 2020 he, he does this shit. Body shit he does this shit that's a no no that's a no no <laughs> you can't comment on nobody's weight, yo. He don't give a fuck. Yeah. He, he said, uh, 
physically fit, uh, submissive, cooperative, um, and feminine. Yeah. And those are like the four like main things that, uh, and, and if he, there's another thing that gets him, I won't say in trouble because it makes him more popular, but it has a lot of people hating him is he calls women who are in a certain age group, the, the danger zone. So from, I think it's from like 27 to 35 is the danger zone. And from 35 pat on is a uh, no man's land is what he calls it. <laughs> Yo, I thought the danger zone Earth. was like, I thought the danger Earth zone bag. was like 18 to 25. But that's, I guess, that's not, like, only because I feel like a lot of girls that age are mad and mature, like 18 to 25. Maybe the danger zone for dudes, but the danger zone for women, he's saying is 27 to 35 because, you know, like the, t the clock is ticking, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, fertility or whatever, oh, and then it, also he it. says, "Now, of all the ladies listening, I'm I'm telling you about this dude." These, yeah, yeah, exactly. The views <laughs> express. <laughs> yo, yo, yo! But Charles, not the yo, views but, express. yeah, but Charles is is a big advocate of this guy's YouTube page. <laughs> and he's, on the, he's number one on the Patreon. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you on the Patreon, everybody. <laughs> He's shouting yeah. me out in all his videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got no one even got the release footage. You you got here on a, on, a, on a Sunday morning with the new shit, <laughs> with the new pimp game. He's he's dedicating entire episodes to me and shit. That's hilarious. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he, and he says like you know, a uh, uh, men men who you know high high earning whatever men want uh women of a certain of a younger age they're not necessarily going to date in their age bracket they're going to go younger yeah. um which is which even i even know women who say that like we like that's pretty average we see it all the time like rich dudes they'll get them like if they're divorced or whatever you know they they get like a younger chick or whatnot but i, I always find that i don't think I, I always find this a little odd when dudes like have to have a girl like 10, 15 years younger than them. Like they target that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and then again, I don't know anyone yeah. like that. I don't Wait. personally know. I, I feel like all the people that I've seen is like older, rich, rich white men, you know? And I could be wrong. I just, maybe yeah. that's what I've come experience with, but usually it's like an old, you know, white dude with a sports car that, you know, and I'm sure obviously that's done time and time again, you know, with different backgrounds. But every time I see it, it's like some dude like that, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I've been watching yeah, too much like 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day, yo, that's my shit. Yo, yo that shit is good. That's, I think, oh man, it's, it's, yo, you come will, on, We man. will come turn on, this son. BBS episode to 90 Day Fiance commentary. Yo, yo But we'll bro, never do as good of a job just, as, uh, as Yamanika. She was commenting on the 90 Day Fiance and I had no idea what it was. And then I, me and my wife have been pinching oh, on it, yo, dogs, for like six days straight. Now I'm just stuck in between the couch cushions like this. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I got to catch up on it, but it's crazy. It's, I love it. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, man. I, I, it's, it's, it's wild, man. Yeah, man. I, it's, it's weird. Like dudes like that, I see, um, I think it, it, it happens one of two ways. Either the, like they're divorced. So they started out with, you know, a woman in their age range because they were young. They get divorced, and now the ego is bruised or whatever, and they got to go get like a young thing on their arm that's not gonna like that's just gonna fall in line or whatever. Even though she's clearly only there for the money, but he don't right. care. He's just like whatever. Or yeah, I think, I think that's what Hobbs is. Um, no, go ahead. Yeah, is is. Or, or it's like a dude that just, you know, uh, the Leos of the world, the Leo DiCaprio's of the world and all that, like they just get older, but the woman never, <laughs> her age never changes. As right, soon right. as she gets over above the age of like 25, right. he switches it out for a new 20 year old. I mean, me personally, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm pushing, I'm pushing 40 as it is. And I, I, I cannot see myself not that young girls who are 20 aren't attractive of course but if you have a conversation 
Yeah, that's with a saying. twenty year old, like, yo, it 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 just doesn't it doesn't add up to it doesn't supersede their beauty. Like like their beauty can only last but for so long. But when you start, when you actually have to deal with a person day to day and actually interact with a person oh. day to day. Yo, man, you gotta I, be able I, to I, like I imagine. have I a did, conversation, I did a man. Of, I did a lot of uh, young people, younger people, and maybe not always that young. Like, yo, I'm, yo, but twenty, like a twenty-two year old, and if you're like in your four, that shit is crazy. And it's just like two different worlds, and it's they're crazy. supposed to be doing what they're doing. It's supposed, and, you know, they're right. supposed. To, they're, it's not they're they're pretty, right. What I'm doing is fine. It's right. But together, I, I don't know how that shit how that shit pans out, man. Yo, it's a it's it's, it's weird it's weirdo shit to me. Uh, to actually, I mean, to have a flint, you know, a rich older dude want to take a twenty something to the Bahamas for the weekend, whatever, do y'all's thing. But it's like when you when they actually are like in like real life relationships, I'd be like, how does that even how does that even work? Like I don't know, but. To each his own, I guess. Yeah, that shit is wild. That shit is wild. Oh, uh, you yeah, I feel like um yeah, it would just be exhausting, you know, just to <laughs> to listen it's to exhausting, that bro. Shit. Like what? Cause the thing is they got so much energy, yo. I don't wanna do shit. <laughs> I don't wanna do shit. I need somebody that's as boring as I am at this point. Like, sit on the couch, watch Hulu, and that's it. Like, I don't want to go out dancing every night. I don't want to go. I yeah, I don't, don't want to be friends. friends. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be friends. Yeah. Six different personalities. I don't, Six don't, different 20-year-old personalities. Hi. Bro. That's just rough. Bro, I want to I wanna do it. Exactly what you just said with your wife is ideal to me. Sit on the couch, watch 90 Day yeah. Fiance. Just judging people on TV. About every and judge people. Yeah. That's all I want to do with my girl. I don't want to be like dealing with no 20-year-old shit. That's crazy. She got her only fans. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, what? <laughs> I know. She's doing TikTok. She doing TikToks in the living room, break dancing and shit. <sighs> Like, nah, man, I, I can't deal with it. Yo, dogs, when you told me you were you were rounding up to 40, I got jealous. I was looking at your beard. I was like, yo, it's not one gray hair creeping in there. This guy's annoying. <laughs> this guy's flat. Yo, uh, I'm Rip. blessed down here. I'm, I'm blessed I'm blessed from like the, the bottom of the ear, the ear down, but from the ear up, it's a it's a whole different story. It gets a little. This silvery. isn't a hat. This is a, a this is a prescription from my doc from my barber. This that's what this hat is. <laughs> it's like take one of these and call me on Friday. <laughs> Yo, it, it's always odd, right, to see, you know, uh, our, our our favorite rap stars, you know, people that we looked up to, Asian like like that. You know, what I'm saying that when I saw DMX on the yeah. verses, I was like, damn, he had the heavy bags, he had a belly. Yo, 1996. Belly. You couldn't tell. You couldn't tell DMX shit. He was shirt off. He was all energy across the state. He sat down for a lot of that shit. Yo, <laughs> Snoop yo. Dogg's uh, dread started back here. Gray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was gray. But you know what? I gotta say, they still did their thing. But you could, like, I mean, you gotta understand, yeah. right? Twenty five years later. They're older, it's crazy, they're old, man. And, but I, I, I'm still older. holding on. I still look at them like they're, like they're kids rapping. I still do too. And it's wild because especially especially now, like I'll go into a, um, you know, we got playlists now and we got YouTube. So you don't necessarily half venture out into this new generation of music. You can stay in your own bubble. Right. So I'll be in like nine, from 92 to 97, like day in and day out, just right. in my own bubbles. So, so like Snoop is still beating a murder case in my world. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like Burr, yo, in my Snoop, in my Snoop mind, is still wearing that, that that white button dot, and he has his hair pulled back in a ponytail, 
in the courtroom <laughs> right. praying. <laughs> right, right. Next to one of the Kardashian lawyers <laughs> or some shit. Yep, yep. In my mind, that's exactly what's going on. So like, it's weird. Yeah, when you see when you see them in real time, you'd be like, "Damn, son." Yeah, but, yeah. I did so, and, and and that's one thing about the pandemic, this pause, that's been nice is to see gain, gaining access to these guys who I looked up to, who have entertainment for years, you know, with these versus battle on Instagram live, yeah. you know, everyone's kind of stuck at home. So they're just more available, you mm -hmm. know, through virtually, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool because I love to hear these artists uh, talk behind the scenes about the build up to the albums, you know, mm -hmm. interacting with each other. It's so fucking fly. It's dope. It's dope, man. The it's other dope. day- I love it too, I, man. I love no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I, I love it too, but I ain't gonna lie. When that uh, when Gucci and Jeezy battle, I was hiding under my bed. I like I was expecting bullets to fly through my that laptop. Was I was like, I was nervous right? for that one. That was uncomfortable. <laughs> Yo, I was, I was watching like, it like bruh. this. I was watching it 24 hours later, like this. Biting my thumbnail. <laughs> Yo, that is talk about growth, man. If if that's when that's when you that's when you you know that like whenever you see these kids and they and they look like they're unreachable, like sometimes you'll see a kid be like, yo, this motherfucker's gone. This like this little nigga's the devil. Like he he ain't yeah, he can't yeah, be brought yeah, back. Yeah. But we but when you look at something like that, like Jeezy and and Gucci being in the same room and, and doing that. Yo, man, anybody can opportunity and, and given resources and, and an avenue, like anybody can be reached. Cause that you would have never thought that shit would have happened. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't even aware. a year ago. Yeah, I wasn't even aware of that prior beef. Did you know much about it? Oh yeah. Um, you remember when you remember when those beef DVDs used to come out? Do you do you remember those beefs? The beef yeah, series yeah, yeah. that came yeah. out years ago. Yeah. Beef one, beef two. I, I used to be up on that shit like crazy. And they used to actually play it on like BET. BET was reckless back in the day. They used to play them shits like it's the all game. the time. The, the um the uh subs yeah, the autumn autumn hip hop DVDs of sub zero, the all, right, right, all that right. shit. And they would just have his pri pre YouTube before all, you know, internet. So back then, I followed that whole, whole storyline even back then of like, uh, you know, Jeezy, you know, putting the price on his head and all that kind of shit. Yeah, and like, it, it, it's Gucci man actually me. having a, a, actually killing one of his partners. Yeah, yeah, that, man. That's wild. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where. No, go ahead. My yeah, bad. There's you, a little, there's a little bit of that, delay. Um, right? It's a delay. It's like we're on CNN right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> back, back to you, McB. It's like that. <laughs> Fuck. And yeah. reporting live. That's funny. Fuck. Did you? How yeah, bad is the delay? It's not. It's, it's like not, five seconds, man. Not, as bad if I know now that we know. <laughs> now that we know. Yeah, I feel like I'm bombing with you because every time I say something, you look at me like this, and then it's fuck. You know, you know who I saw recently. Uh, you know Ghostface and, and Raekwon the Chef. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm that I saw their live, and their um, and it were it, it, they were talking about doing the Cuban Links album. They were talking about all that shit, and it was so funny. Like they still got the same lingo that yeah. they had before, and it's it's like it's just so funny because Ghostface was talking to Ray. And he was like, yo, remember when we walked up in the in the Source Awards? He said, you know, 
A couple of my partners still got those biscuits that we brought to the to the award show. He said, yeah, they, they're 25 year old biscuits. So I'm like, what? They're talking about guns they had 25 years ago, how their friends still have it. And you know, they captured the essence of the mm -hmm. 90s with that live. And it's like, not a big production. They're just on their phones like we're fucking doing, you know, on the yeah. computer right now, just shooting the shit. And it was really, really funny, man, how they, um, he was talking about being 25 years old and recording the albums they were recording during the time. He said, when you're 25 and 95 with a bunch of live niggas, yo, you know, like you could you couldn't tell me nothing. You know, I had one foot in the street, I had one foot in the studio. He said, You couldn't tell me nothing. And I remember that time. Yep. yep. And it was a, a special time because you had Snoop Dogg, you had Wu Tang Clan, you had Biggie, you had just a bunch of powerhouse rap groups, man. You know, you know, like I uh I grew up in Ohio, and so growing up in the Midwest. We never really had, or or particularly Ohio, like we had rappers come out of the Midwest, but it was mostly like Chicago, something like that. Um, yeah, St. Bone Louis. Thugs. Bone th we we did so we had Bone Thugs, and that and when they popped off, that was like our that was like our our ones right there. But in general, we didn't have a whole lot of artists that put us on the map. But what that did, since we didn't really have our own sound. Cause both of us had to go, they went West coast. They didn't pop off out of Ohio. They like had to get signed with easy and ruthless and all that. Right. Right. But what that did was it made us unbiased to music. So we, 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 we pulled from everybody. We didn't care where you was from. Like we, if you was West coast down South, Midwest, East coast. Like we, we loved everybody. If you was making dope music, we just like, we jumped on that. Right, right. Yeah, hip hop was like, man, it's it's nothing like the '90s, man. Nothing. Yeah, that's true. I, I know we old heads, but I don't care, man. It's nothing like the '90s, bro. No, it's it, it's true, and you know what? And we can't be too generous, or oh, maybe I can't. I say '90. If yes. I had to do like three three years, it would be '93, four, five, '93 to '96. Yeah, yes. Yeah. With bananas, because like late '90s. You know, we could, there was some bullshit out there. You know, yeah, what I'm yeah. like I felt like a lot of people were jumping on the Italian mafioso. You know, and yeah. and, and 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 the down south state start to gain a lot of traction. Like a lot of people want to sound like the, the south. It was like migrating that way. Yep, yep. But yeah, yep. there's no doubt about it. Everyone had their own individual sound, and the the records being sold. And it was just like powerhouse rap groups, and it was the, the creative like level was was high. It was a compet it it was a competition. I mean, not that you know, not that beefs was necessarily a good thing, but that level of competition like brought out the best in everybody. And now everybody just wants to. And also back then, and I, I've heard Ghostface and and Raekwon talk about this too. I don't know if they talked about it on the uh, verses, but like. You couldn't sound like nobody else. If you did, you had problems. Like it was considered disrespectful to yeah. take somebody's flow, take somebody's cadence, or ad lib, or or a, or a style, or a look. Like it, it was considered like you was disrespecting that person. So everybody had to have their own shit. Now you can't tell Migos from Uzi from yeah. Whoever, like everybody looks the same, sound the same. So yeah, yeah it was just so, sure. it, was, it was so like, it was so different back then. Yeah, no, for sure. It, it, didn't, it even happened with comedy for a while. Do you remember yeah. like, and this, I can't believe it's like 10 years ago where it was um like the, the alternative scene was popping. Yeah. Like everyone had like a plaid shirt and yeah. a heavy beard and they were fucking, their jokes all about whole wheat bread. Like I, I just couldn't, yep. you know, I, I couldn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? There was a time when comedy, alternative comedy was popping. And I was like, they all sound like they all, you know, I don't understand this. You know why that energy. is? I think, I think, I, I think the reason certain things end up sounding the same and also with music too, or whatever, whenever like the um, gatekeepers shrink, Whenever there's not as many gatekeepers, and then 
whoever the, the, the gatekeepers are allowing in, that's what everybody else gravitates towards. Yeah. Like in the nineties, you had, when it come to comedy, you had, um, you had Comedy Central, but you also had Comic View. You also had Def Jam. You had, it was, it just seemed like a, you know, the industry, you could do a lot of different stuff and get on somehow, some way. But then all of a sudden, you know, a lot of that left and it was nothing but Comedy Central for a long time or nothing but, you know, Comedy Central, maybe Netflix, like even yeah. HBO had got out of the comedy game for a while. So now it's a little bit more diverse. You've seen a lot of more avenues pop up. So hopefully that'll encourage more a diverse voice. But yeah, that whole time, it wasn't really a lot of ways you could get on unless you went through this one channel or this one kind of like, oh, if you didn't get JFL, then you just not popping. It's just, right, you know right. what I'm saying? So you you conform to be like, all right, well, I guess I got to, I guess I got to do this now. Let me get my I know. I, shirt. I, I, I remember feeling that way. I remember like, y'all gonna get me a plaid shirt. <laughs> a plaid shirt. And I'm letting the beard grow heavy. And right. I'm gonna have a, a, a joke about pigeons riding on each other's backs. <laughs> right. You know, I'm like, y'all trying to eat. I'm like, joke. I was like, that's gonna be my alternative shit right there. Mixed up with an urban act out, I'm gonna be killing them. You be killing it. <laughs> killing it. It's funny how that shit like went through my head. I was like, It'll yo, fuck with you. And you don't even mean to like do that. You just like, you just trying to survive. It's like, you want to be an artist, but at the same time, you don't want to just be playing the three people for the next 20 years. Like you want to actually have a career. And so you start, your mind starts fucking with you. Like, all right, well maybe, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. Right, next thing right. you know, you asked out. You don't even <laughs> recognize yourself no more. <laughs> Next thing you know, you want a pen and pad on stage, you're, you're signing fucking, you're doing a TED talk on stage. Right. <laughs> Drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. <laughs> fucking eat, eating microwavable pizza from the spot. Right. right. Like, who is this person? I don't even know this person. <laughs> right. With your arms crossed, talking shit about other comics that come in like this. Oh my God, it's the worst, man. Um, you know who I, who's special I saw the other day? And once again, I kind of chalked this off to like just being at home a lot more because I really watch specials. Yeah, but me it too. Was, it was a, a, a you know, so much fun to watch. It was uh, T.K. Kirkland's, uh, yo, forget who about raised it. you? Uh, forget about your it. Your dog. Like, I forgot, but I forgot what inspired me to do comedy. I, I inspired... Sorry, I forgot what what I what I really found like wholeheartedly funny. Yeah. Originally, you know, I forgot a lot of this shit. And yep. when I saw him, I was like, oh, I love this dude. Like I love yep. that's my sense of humor. Like this dude embodied me as a kid listening to funny motherfuckers. Yep. And I don't have a lot of dudes like that right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bro, it's crazy like you say that because I went through the same thing. I went through a wormhole one time of a of probably a week straight just watching, just on YouTube, on my phone, yeah. just watching old shit, earthquake, watching old earthquake clips, yeah. old Mike Epps clips, just like going through and just like remembering like, oh yeah, I remember when you could just be funny, like you didn't, yeah. It wasn't this whole politically correct. You know what the thing is? Though, I don't even blame, um, I used to blame the people. I used to, like, you know how Chappelle was like, came out and said the whole crowd was a bunch of bitch ass niggas. Like, I don't blame the people no more. At this point, I blame us because it's our job to not bow to that shit. It's mm -hmm. our job to do, to do us right. and, and go against that bullshit. But because, like I said, the industry starts dangling carrots and saying, if you uh will cancel you, you know, that word cancel gets thrown out now. And like, you won't have a career. If you say, if you say something we don't like, everybody gets shook, everybody gets scared. But like, I feel like the pendulum is switching and it's going back to, especially now that things are shut down, you realize how much that shit don't really matter and how much anything could be taken away from you anyway. Right. So I think when things get back going again and people are actually able to like do their own thing, I think true artists are really going to come out and just start talking their shit again and not being like, 
scared to say what they want to say. Um, I, I agree. And I have a feeling, you know, after this pause, we're going to see a lot of resurgence of like some good, fun, creative shit. Yeah. I mean, people are going to be popping up with some dope ass comedy or um, music. I have a feeling this is gonna, this is brewing some fly shit. Yeah. Inevitably. Yeah, yeah. I think it has to. It has to. It has to, man, because like you can't be in the future, like somebody being offended at a joke is going to look so dumb compared to everything that we, we we're going through currently. That's like, you know point. what I'm saying? If your if your sensitivity is like, oh, he said the wrong pronoun for the little like, like if you're on that after we done went through all of this, like right. you look crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm looking forward to what comes, you know, after this whole thing. I, I, I always said it, man. Like we were in the height of the cancer culture before the pandemic, and like Mother Nature was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna cancel all this shit. <laughs> cancel all you motherfuckers. We got camp, yeah, yeah. We, you know, like big time dogs, and it really yeah. puts things in perspective. You know, maybe we have too many liberties and we're complaining about way too many things." But mm -hmm. it's, it's fanned, it's amplified by social media. And we're all irresponsible with it to a certain degree. You know, I'm irresponsible yeah. with it. I'm a big animal lover. I found myself on a face on a Facebook snake group trolling people. I'm on a I'm a 41 year old man trolling people on a snake group. You know, like what am I doing? <laughs> right. We you know what's funny too, you say that like. If social media was around back in the day, all them motherfuckers probably would have got canceled too. So it's like, maybe it's not so much that society has changed or society has become more sensitive. It's just that technology has changed. And so it's in more power now to be up front. But I'm sure if social media, if Twitter was around in the 90s, like mad people would been getting canceled so absolutely it's funny how we're talking about the you power. know it's all the same yeah yeah no absolutely and it's funny how we're talking about the power of uh of technology and everything but meanwhile my wi-fi cannot work fluidly in the middle of a day in the middle of a, a sunday afternoon that's <laughs> ironic <laughs> like right now it looks like you're doing the robot as i talk to you i'm like god damn <laughs> But we're doing it. We're doing it. We're making it happen. We have not advanced that far that much in technology. <laughs> For real. So what have That's you been hilarious. on? What what have you been on? Um, like as far as, as the pause has been concerned, have you been creating some shit? I know you got chalked up with McB, chucked up with with with, with, with McB, right? Am I saying that correctly? Chucked up with McB. It might be, uh, I got, uh, my podcast is Black Twitter Talk, um, and Chucked Up News is these little, is these Chucked Up News. Up. My um, bad, I, I butchered it a little bit. I was putting your yeah. last name in it, it's Chucked Up News. I love that, I love, uh, I love how you uh, print uh, it together. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's something like, it's funny, like, I used that back in the day. Yeah. And just and our like you was talking earlier about pages go, you know what, fuck it. I'm not doing this shit right. no more. But I uh, like bringing back up from from back in the day. Um and uh Trying to keep the ship going. Yeah. Yo, you know what? I can't hear you, man. You can hear me? Oh. <laughs> I can hear you. All right. This shit is annoying. We're going to fucking have to do this because I'm just going to get mad. For I'm going to end up breaking my brand new computer. Yo, dogs, my computer is a week old. I don't know why oh, I... Oh, shit. It, it, the shit... 
I don't know why it's doing this to me. I feel like I'm mad frustrated, dogs. Is it a, uh, a what kind of computer you got? Can you still not hear me? No, nah, we're good now. Okay. But this shit has been, you know, it's been dipping. What kind of what kind of computer is it? I got a, you know, just a a, 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 a laptop. I, I should have probably got a Mac. I don't even know if the, if it's the different if there's a difference of how it receives their internet. Or, or the Wi-Fi, you know. Mm. What what do you have? You have a Mac? Yeah, just, um, a MacBook. Do, do you ever have problems with the with, like this? I'm not gonna lie, MacBooks. I, I live by MacBooks. Uh, Mac yeah. in general, like like it's some shit. Like I don't really um, and they do they do some bullshit like because they know they're so good, so they'll do some dumb shit, some dirtbag shit, like not include a fucking uh. USB port, <laughs> so you gotta get like some uh, you gotta get like a connector and adapters, and they do some bullshit like that. But the actual computer is 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 really like reliable and 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 good, and it comes with a bunch of shit that that I use. So yeah, I mean, I got I got this laptop, uh, and I was thinking of getting a Mac, but I just wanted something that I was familiar with, and I'm yeah. not even sure that's the reason why it's giving me a hard time. It could just be the internet, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's 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 annoying. I um I find myself what internet do you use? Uh Spectrum. I never had uh Spectrum. I forget what we had. The other one. Fire uh no, was it Fios maybe? I don't know. Yeah, now I'm like looking at my Wi-Fi to see to see if I can connect it to my 5G. The 5G sucks, and then I'm seeing other people's Wi-Fi names and their names are pissing me off. One dude's name is Dylan's Tight Booty. I'm like, it's probably Dylan's Tight Booty. <laughs> you know what I'm like, I don't know who Dylan is, but I know he's around me. He's probably upstairs fucking around. <laughs> you know, it's just it's 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 a it's a it's annoying. Oh, oh it's crazy, man. It is crazy. Yo, but before I let you go, man, because I don't want this to continue happening, I want you to plug in once again all, all the stuff you got going on. You got chucked up news and you got your podcast. So plug that all in. So podcast, uh, Black Twitter Talk. Um, I'm not even going to hold y'all. I I, I got to get back on it. I've been, uh, I've been, you know how you miss one? If you miss one, it's like you, you good for missing like a month worth. You got you know, why, why, What is it about the human psychology, the makeup that does that? Because that should happen with my podcast, you know, and I, a full year. And then I miss one and then like three weeks go by and I'm looking, I'm like, I'm not doing this shit. Like mm -hmm. it happens fast. That's just scary. Fast, fast, man. Fast. And with people with, with training, we're working out. They're like, oh, I'm not going to work out today. Next thing they know, they're 75 pounds heavier. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Eat, eating ring dings and, and haagen dazs ice cream with bacon wrap sausages it's for crazy man it's crazy how the mind does that too i think also it might be because you know it says you have to do i forget what the number is but you got to do something a certain amount of times before it comes becomes habit right um and so i don't know if maybe i just didn't hit that number but like i know for me too your mind will play when, when you're doing something for expecting a result as opposed to just doing it just because you feel like doing it. That's different too. So if yeah. you're doing a podcast and it don't blow up the, when you want it to blow up, that your mind will start getting on you. If you don't bulk up or lose the weight or whatever it is you're trying to do in a time frame that you want to do it, that, that those voices will kick in and then if you let one voice kick in, it, if it gets a hold of you, next thing you know, you like fuck it. So that is so true, man. That is that's that's a very good point. And it's crazy how we're also like designed to always want to. And I think it's a, a very American way of, of working. Like we got to keep on working because in mm -hmm. my idle time, I should just be reading a book. But of course, I reduce myself to fucking around with you know Instagram or whatever. And now I'm in my head about some shit I wasn't even worried about. Right. And, it, and it's, it's making me more exhausted than I than I was when I was working. <laughs> right. <laughs> more irritable and shit. Right. Why don't I switch my eye like this? Right, right, switch right. 
Shit. You, you was never this stressed out when you was doing construction. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but but isn't that isn't that crazy how uh you know if there's some downtime, you know, appreciate that shit. You know, it's there's some downtime. Yeah, you man. Know, the holidays are here, be present, but it's hard. It's got it's a whole other uh way. It's a, a whole other discipline, even though you're not doing it. There's a discipline right. to remain present and it's being chill, like because chill. because it's not only America, but also our in, our industry doesn't lend itself to that because we judge our success is based on other people's success right. in our in our minds. Right. So like, no matter how successful we are in our field, if to us if we're constantly seeing everybody else be more successful or whatever doing the things that we're trying to get to it puts that in us i'm not working hard enough i'm not working hard enough i'm not working hard enough yeah any any form of entertainment i think is like that mm -hmm. even even if you're like you're, you're you know a fucking poet or writer like you know all that shit because i i know people who do that sort of work and they feel the same way they're like you know oh shit i gotta keep on you know moving, you know, something has got to be going on. Mm -hmm. And it's bullshit. It's actually the most violent thing you could do to yourself doing that yeah, shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, and man. That's another end. And then when you finally get the shit that you thought would make you happy. Don't matter. You still have some dirtbag shit. Don't matter. <laughs> Disrespecting yourself. <laughs> With your nasty negative thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Don't matter, man. What's the, what's the next? Yeah, yeah, walking on negative. Yep. You know? Yep. You know, just pissed off for no reason. I, you know, you know, you're you're having a bad couple of days when you walk by someone and they yawn and this makes you furious. Like, <laughs> oh, look at that stupid ass yawn. Look at that. Oh. You ever... <laughs> yep. Somebody, somebody's happy and you uh and you mad. Somebody's happiness makes you mad. It's like, yo, I need to check myself, man. What is going on? Yo, the other day I saw a woman blow her nose and it was fine, but she had mitts, right? Oh, but yeah, she yeah, took yeah. off the mitts and the mitts had little hooks on them. So they were dangling <laughs> from her sleeves and that shit made me furious. <laughs> I was like, grown ass woman with clips on her mitts while she blows her nose. And I was just looking at her like this. <laughs> and disgust. I was like, yo, I need, to, I need to clean, I need to clean my head. Oh, that's hilarious, bro. You know, that's 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 irrational behavior. I mean, yep. I didn't act on it. I didn't, you know, say, what are you doing? But in my mind, I was like, yo, there's some violent shit going on. And you and it care it, it weighs on you. It care you carry <laughs> that. <laughs> you know, and if I would have went to anybody with those thoughts, now I could do it in jest. Right, and right. The time with it. But if I would have went to anybody with that, they would think I'm nuts. Like, what are you talking about? That's a great, that's a great thing about, that's what I miss too, is talking to my comic friends in the back of the club, because yeah. it's such an understanding that everything that we're saying, though it may be based in truth, is still in jest, but you don't have to preference that with comedians. Right. You ever, I don't know if like, you ever get so used to talking to comics that the first time you talk to a civilian, you forget, and then you you say something and they look at you like you just like they look at you like you just murdered uh uh you know seven babies and six puppies like absolutely it, it like, happens oh. to me quite often like if i do if so like right now we're vibing i'm having a good time with you and i fucking forgot i forget how much i miss my comic friends right so right, right now i'm gonna talk to some regular boring motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> and i'm gonna and i'm gonna want to kill myself because they're like Oh wow, well, that's a little. That's a little like. That's a little. Like, you know, they're, they're gonna do something like that. They're gonna like their chin is gonna suck into their. They're gonna do some shit like that. And I'm like, oh, that's why I would rather be yelling on Zoom to my comic friends. Yep. <laughs> with no Wi-Fi. With no Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, like this is this this, this is the shit that I rather do than to yep. do these motherfuckers. Yep. 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 It's crazy. You know, and man. it's uh 
it, it happens quite often, you know. It's like I'm like, oh shit. If I do a weekend, you know, I've been fortunate during the pandemic to do a couple of weekends here and there with my my boys or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you know how it is. Then you go back on and you're talking to regular people. You're like, oh shit, yeah, man, I miss, I miss stand. I forget sometimes how much I miss stand up and everything that's involved with it. You know, for the most part, miss going to the club. You know, and all that shit. Yeah, man. You know what it's like. I, I, I unfortunately haven't experienced this for myself yet, but I, I heard. Uh, I was doing the speaking of random shit. You just watch on YouTube or whatever. I watched this Jake the Snake documentary. Oh, I right? saw that. And he and he was describing. He was just like, I, I'm paraphrasing, but he goes, "You're on the road night after night. You know, six days a week or whatever. Sometimes seven days a week, night after night." your women are throwing themselves at you. They're doing every possible thing to please you sexually. You're able to just get out all your demonic sexual urges out on these women who just want to be there for you. And then you go home and try to make love to your wife. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's impossible. That's what it's like being a comedian, having conversations with comedians. (laughs) We say the most crazy wild shit to each other. We ain't got a preference in. We ain't got, we could just be our just most just disgusting, whatever self. And we, there's no judgment. We get it. It's a vibe. And then you try to have a conversation with like a regular person. And it's just like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to talk to you. Like, yeah, you start using words you wouldn't normally use. Yeah. You know, (laughs) the other day, like only because I'm just you trying to use other words. I was like, oh, should I leave the the, the door ajar? Like <laughs> I would never say that. that make, first of all, it doesn't make any sense. You only use ajar in storytelling. I'm not telling a story here. It's, I don't know how to talk anymore because it's not my comedy buddy. And if right. I were talking about anything else, it would be gross, it'd be inappropriate, it'd be disturbing. I might wish death on somebody. <laughs> Four times over during a conversation with a comic. And most likely it's another comic I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it's fine. It's fine. It's Although, fine. Well, so it's fine. You know, it's hard. Oh, it's, man. You know, so but sometimes, true. you know, the comics, we are mean, man. We got a mean streak. We got a mean. And I'm glad for the most uh for the most part. A lot of who I keep close to me is very positive. But when you know, yeah. when you're behind, you know, talking your shit, we go, you get me. But oh, and you're good, you're good this way. You you're you're positive, which I like. I like the fact that you display like a pot, you know, you do you, you give out positive energy. And I and that's honestly why I really appreciate your post. You're funny, but you're positive. And when you're like faced with uh, someone who's just always negative, yeah. Like especially like on Twitter or some shit. Like I gotta talk to my boy, like my boy, like my boy Giannis. Sometimes he goes in, <laughs> and I'm like, dog. Yeah. Like the shit. Like I feel I, I'm a I, I I I'm entertained by it, but it's super. Like I'm like, dog. How much energy does that, does that require? And right, like, right. It's bad, right? I'm like, yeah, it's bad. But I like watching it, so I'm I'm, I'm guilty. Right. Too, you know? Right. I, I, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm very, um, I'm going to use this, I'm going to butcher this word, but I'm very subsec- su- susceptible, susceptible, susceptible yeah. to other people's energy. Yeah. So I'm vulnerable to that. So I have to keep certain energy. I have to be aware of the energy I keep around me because I'm, I become like, I'm like, I, I, uh, attract to that so like if you are compl- always negative i find myself being negative all yeah. like i'm like how why am, why am i like this or if you de- if i'm constantly around somebody that's depressed or constantly around not oh. that you can't try to uh you know bring them out of that or, or be a positive influence on them but at the same time i can only uh be around that i can't be around that all the time because then it, it affects my mental emotional Your health dogs. So. yo I'm on the same exact boat. Like I, I, I snippets of that shit, and I'm talking about 
it's crazy. Even just reading it, you know, it's yeah. one thing reading that shit. I'm like, yo, it's, it's like enough, dog. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't I can't do it, man? And um, it's easy to get caught up in that. Yeah, it's man. Easy. And most most of the time when I'm on, you know, trying to, it's a it's a cliche to say, but it's like be the change you want to see in the world. It's like most of the time. I'm speaking to myself. Like if I post some positive shit on on Instagram or Facebook, or whatever, I'm really talking to me. It's like it's not like I, like I'm never like just the dude on the mountain. Tr- like I got my shit together and I'm displaying wisdom and not, like I'm talking to me. Yeah, it never comes across that way either. Every time you do it, it never comes across like you're you're standing yeah. up. You're like fucking on a horse. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I pepper you guys with some knowledge for your day. Here's some right. knowledge for you. Like right. it never feels like that, you know. Right. It never feels like back in, in back in early 2000 when I was using drugs and the drug dealer comes and he goes, "Here's a bag of cocaine for you. Here's one for you. Now have a good day." It, right. feels, it feels. It, it, I, I can tell it is authentic and. You know, it, f- it feels good. So I think by you sh- saying that it's for you, like if it, it's 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 a uh, it's received that way. It's received in, in a positive, not condescending way. Because there's some people who are like overly yeah. positive. And I'm like, yeah, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you're full of shit. You're full of shit. Straight up, uh, the worst, yo. Yeah. The, the worst. Shit. You are full of shit, my friend. Yo, Charles, you're the fucking man. I really appreciate you taking the time. Please, you got to promise me on record that when things clear up a little bit, I can get you in the crib and we sit down and do this because I love your energy. You're one of the funniest dudes I know. And I always enjoy seeing and talking to you. So promise me when things get a little loose that you come to the lab and we chop it up in person. 100%, man. I miss you, bro. Uh, Vic's always been a big fan, you know that. So likewise, now or whenever. All right, cool, cool. Um, we'll do it sooner than later, man. We'll, you know, uh, we'll figure it out. And I'm happy we we got, I had you on. It's a little chopped up, but you know, it's a DBS podcast. That's so the DBS. Expected. That's how we do. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Have a fantastic day. You too, man. Blessings, man. All right, one peace.